Okay, we are back again. So, although previous one also load following, but this is another version, right? Another another uh, another type of modeling. So, load following. I told you what is load following, right? So, when when load disturbance is there, generation will chase the load such that generation will match the load in other way, right? And a steady state ideal condition, so generation is equal to uh, load plus of course, losses are there, but we do not consider that, right? So, in this just now we have seen that in restructured environment, the generation companies that is Genco's supply power to various distribution companies in short we call discos, right? at competitive prices. Now, thus discos may or may not have contacts with other with the Genco's in their own area I told you, because they have freedom to choose the Genco's of other areas too. For the sake of clarity, consider a two area system as shown in figure 1. Here, what we are, what we are, uh, our modeling is same, but what we are trying to make it, suppose in area 1, it is disco 1 and it is disco 2, right. And in area 2, this is disco 3 and disco 4, that is your distribution companies. Now, area 1, one generation company is there, Genco 1, but it has two units, two generating units, the unit 1 and unit 2. Philosophy remains same. In the previous case, we saw Genco 1 and Genco 2, and assuming that uh, one generating unit or its equivalent, right. So, question or maybe many many units are there uh, with same rating, same turbine uh, generating unit, everything, right? So, but here philosophy remains same, everything is same. But this Genco one, but Genco generation company one has two units, unit one and unit two. Similarly, generation Genco two, it has two units, unit two, uh, unit three and unit four. And this is that your schedule tie line power flow, that is delta p tie your one two, right? Same as before, same as before, only mathematically or block diagram wise slightly we have changed, right. So, this is schematic representation of a two area interconnected system in the structured environment, right. So, in area 1, now there is one generation company designated by Gen 1 with two generating units, it is unit 1 and unit 2, and two distribution companies designated by disco 1 and disco 2, right. Similarly, in area 2, there is only uh, one generation companies, I have missed one, right. There is only one generation company, Genco 2 and two distribution companies designated by disco 3 and disco 4. So, Genco 2 also got two generating units, unit 3 and unit 4. So, we define the disco participation matrix, it will remain same, it will remain same as before, right. So, this is the disco participation matrix. So, there we are writing Genco 1, this is your I am making in short disco 1, disco 2, disco 3, disco 4 distribution companies, I am making it D 1, D 2, D T 3, 4. So, this is D 1, this is D 2, this is D 3 and this is D 4 and there it was Genco 1, Genco 2, Genco 3, Genco 4 and here instead of that we write it is unit 1, this is unit 2, this is unit 3 and this is your unit 4, right. So, this way right, instead of Genco 1, Genco 2, Genco 3, Genco 4, we are writing unit 1, unit 2, unit 3 and unit 4 and philosophy remains same, that is your same contact participation factor, that matrix and this side will be, if you want to find out the contact demand, this side will be same as before, delta P L 1, delta P L 2, delta P L 3, delta P L 4. So, contact participation, uh, contact uh, your what you call demand for Genco unit 1, unit 2 and unit 3 and unit 4 will be CPF 1 1 delta P L 1 plus CPF 1 2 delta P L 2 plus CPF 1 3 delta P L 3 plus CPF 1 4 delta P L, P L 4 and so on, right. So, meaning is same that actually actual essence remains same, right. So, this is equation 1, equation 1 CPFs are the contact participation factor that we know. In DPM, the number of rows equal to the number of generating units, right, that is unit 1 unit 2 of Genco 1 and unit 3 unit 4 of Genco 2 that I told you, while the number of columns is equal to the number of discos that is disco 1, disco 2, disco 3 and disco 4, right. So, each entry in this matrix represents the fraction of the total load contacted by disco towards a generating unit of Genco 1 or Genco 2, this already we have discussed, right. But still for example, CPF 2 3 is the fraction of the total load contacted by disco 3 from unit 2 of Genco 1 in area 1, this is the meaning here, right. There, 
there it was Genco 1, Genco 2, Genco 3. This is from the unit 2 of Genco 1 in area 1 that is CPF 2, 3, right. This is the diff just difference. So, the sum of all the entries in a column that we have seen that is 1 because i is equal to 1 to n is equal to unit means the number of your generating units. So, CPF i j is equal to 1.0 and j is equal to 1 to number of discos. So, n disco, right. Here it is 4 because 4 distribution companies are there together area 1, 2 area to 2 right. So, so, therefore, the expression for contacted power of generating units with discourse given as delta P G C I it is same as delta P i as before previously we have taken that delta P i right it is same as your delta P G C i the contacted power demand j is equal to your n disco and it is C P F i j delta P l j i is equal to 1 to n unit right. There we are writing i is equal to 1 t that uh, in Genco, but here we are writing 1 to n unit and total number of units. So, here it is i is equal to 1, 2, 3 and 4 right. So, there where delta P G C i is the contacted power of i generating unit and delta P L j total demand of disco j that distribution company j right. C P F i j contact participation factor right. So, same as before the schedule steady state power flow on the tie line is given as it is same as before the demand of discourse in area 2 from the generating units in area 1 minus demand of discourse in area 1 from the generating units in area 2 and it is 1 to schedule by chance whatever data you have taken by chance say delta p tie 1 to schedule become negative say minus 0.2 that means basically power is flowing from 2 to 1 right. So, that is the dire uh, actual direction. So, this is we have also seen therefore, delta p tie 1 to schedule same as before that sigma i is equal to 1 to 2 j is equal to 3 to 4 c p f i j delta p l j minus sigma i is equal to 3 to 4, 3 to 4 sigma j is equal to 1 to 2 c p f i j delta p l j this is equation 4. This equation already we have seen for 2 gen cos 2 discos in each area for 2 area system right. So, same equation same equation and the tie line power error also defined as delta p tie 1 to actual minus delta p tie 1 to schedule right. So, at the steady state delta p tie 1 to error will be vanish. So, in that case a steady state delta p tie 1 to actual is equal to delta p tie 1 to schedule that also we have seen right. Now, changes will come. So, this error signal is used to generate the respective area control error AC signal as in the traditional scenarios that is AC 1 is equal to your uh, B 1 delta F 1 plus delta P tie 1 to error and similarly A C 2 will be B 2 delta F 2 plus A 1 to delta P tie 1 to error this is equation 7 right. Now, figure 2 shows the block diagram representation first I will come to the block diagram then all this explanation right. So, let me reduce the volume I uh, sorry reduce the size uh, because I have to accommodate all this right. So, first area 1 and area 2 uh, just hold on how uh, it is it is accommodated right. Now, in this case what happened actually that your uh, uh, what we have to do is uh, so, difference of this one with the previous one I mean I mean a lot of difference is there in the block diagram. Now, question is that when you are naming as a load following that means for generator 1 those who will be in the load following they need a load following controller right they need a load following controller. So, if you look into the diagram this is actually unit 1 in area 1 this is whole is a area in area 1 that whole is a Genco 1 right and this is your unit 2 and area 2 this is unit 3 and this is unit 4 and same as the before that uh, that your uh, uh, previous case the total disco 1, disco 2, disco 3, disco 4 how CPF is coming right. Uh, here that is not shown because that is understandable right, but question is that 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 thing your in this case what happens suppose first for the sake of understanding that each j, j, each j, uh, your what you call that unit must have one load uh, following controller. So, this delta P G C 1 is nothing but the contacted power demand. So, for example, for unit 1 I am writing it is I am making it a delta P G C 1 that is with unit 1 
the contacted power demand it is uh, uh, you are what you call is uh, distribution companies there are four disco 1 disco 2 disco 3 and disco 4 so they they demand power say delta pl1 delta pl2 delta pl3 and delta pl4 right and your contact participation factor you have so therefore delta pgc1 will be your cpf11 same as before delta pl1 i am overwriting on it then cpf12 delta pl2 plus cpf13 delta pl3 plus cpf 1 4 delta p l 4 right delta p l 4. So, this is actually delta p g c 1 same as before it is nothing but the delta p 1 or delta p g c 1 right. So, here it is making delta p g c 1 right. So, this is my delta p g c 1. So, same as before, but control structure here, here we need a load following controller. So, similarly, similarly for delta p g just for your understanding writing everything delta p g c uh, p g c 2 will be c p f 2 1 I am overwriting on it delta p l 1 plus c p f 2 2 delta p l 2 plus c p f 2 3 delta p l 3 plus c p f 2 4 delta p l 4 that is nothing this is the contact demand by the unit 2 in area 1 right because in area 1 2 unit, 1 genco but 2 units unit 1 and unit 2 right. So, this is for delta p g c 2. Similarly, for delta p g c 3 in area 2. So, delta that is a contact demand. So, this one will be c p f 3 1 delta p l 1 plus c p f 3 2 delta p l 2 right plus c p f 3 3 delta p l 3 plus c p f 3 4 delta p l 4 this is delta p g c 3. Similarly, your delta p g c 4 right is equal to c p f 4 1 delta p l 1 plus c p f 4 2 delta p l 2 plus c p f 4 3 delta p l 3 plus c p f 4 4 delta p l 4 right. So, this is the contact this is the power actually. Uh, whatever contracts the various distribution companies they have the contract. So, each generating unit has to generate that much of power delta p g c 1, delta p g c 2, delta p g c 3 and delta p g c 4 for your uh, I mean uh, your what you call by the your units unit 1, unit 2 in area 1 and unit 3 and unit 4 in area 2 respectively right. So, that is why this delta p g c 1, p g c 1 this is coming there it that delta p 1, delta p 2, delta p 3, delta p 4 it was going to the input that is your turbine governed that signal was going, going that this much uh, power has to be generated. But here what we are doing is input is anywhere no higher here, no higher here, input is no higher here right, no higher right, input is somewhere here we are giving. Now, question is that your this is delta p g c 1 then here the delta p g 1 feedback is here. So, these two are uh, compared that is your delta p g c 1 minus delta p g 1 this is the contacted one and this delta p g 1 that is generated by the your what you call by that uh, generating unit 1 right. So, at steady state at steady state this delta p g 1 it has to be is equal to delta p g c 1 because this power has to be generated for that what we are doing is we are putting a load following controller that is q 1 upon s in our integral controller in this case. No p i or p i d I have used simply I have put a put a we have put a uh, your what you call put an integral controller right. So, that is then its gain is k 1 right. Similarly, and feedback is coming here it is coming here right. That means, this generation that delta as we are taking this delta p g 2 and this contactor is power demand this controller is there that means, delta p g 2 will change delta p g c 1 that is load following right. So, it will uh, it will uh, I mean steady state delta p g 1 will be equal to delta p g c 1 right it will chase that uh, this contacted power demand right. Similarly, for unit 2 also you have a delta p g c 2 and this is delta p or p g 2 and this is integral controller your k 2 upon s that means, that output that is, is output is v 1 output is v 1. So, V 1 is equal to actually 
k 1 this integral this thing then this is 1 upon s. So, integral controller. So, it is actually delta p g c 1 minus delta p g 1 actually d t right. So, this is v 1. So, that then that v 1 is coming here as an input right or in general or in general that v i for i th unit is equal to k i that gain of i th unit integral gain of that i th load following controller rather right then integral of delta p g c i minus delta p g i d t right. So, this actually uh, this load following controller actually will force actually generation to match the contacted power demand at steady state. So, similarly here also controller is there similarly here also controller is there similarly here also load following controller is there, but there is no need that all the generating unit will everyone needs that it is uh, that uh, load following controller it depends on the system right. Suppose this unit suppose this unit may have a load following controller because suppose some discos have contact with that and this unit may uh, this unit may be it has no contact with any any discos right. So, in that case this may not be in this thing this will be in AGC. Now, another thing is that in this case another thing is that we have taken APF 1 and APF 2 AC participation factor is same as before, but as it is a load following. So, I have changed I have just changed this uh, your what you call that term uh, uh, that uh, terminology right. Pre it was actually A dash 1 1 in the previous case it is nothing but same thing APF 1 that AC participation factor. Similarly, previous case A dash 1 2 it equal to APF actually it is 2 and APF 1 and same as before APF 1 plus A p f 2 it is actually 1.0 right. Similarly, for this case your for this case right. So, it is o a dash 1 1 a dash 1 2. So, a dash 2 1 is nothing but your A p f 3 right this is A c participation factor for unit 3 and similarly for this one a dash 2 2 is A p f that a c s and a c participation factor for unit 4 that means, here also same thing A p f 3 plus A p f 4 it has to be is equal to 1.0 right. So, these are your what you call A c participation factor. So, basically this A p f this here also A p f 1, A p f 2 and A p f 3, A p f 4. So, basically your uh, they have effect on the transient behavior of the responses a dynamic response the, the responses, but it has no effect on the steady state as long as uncontacted power demand is not there if it is there it has effect that we will see. Now, next one is same as before this is delta p tai 1 to actual and this is delta p tai 1 to schedule this feedback is given here we have seen same same as before and this is delta p tai 1 to error. So, this say this is b 1 delta f 1 because this is delta f 1. So, it is b 1 delta f 1 this delta p tai 1 to error and this is actually your a c 1 right. Similarly, here also it is B 2 delta F 2 plus A 1 2 delta P tai 1 to error. So, this is actually your A C 2 and this 2 as your what you call input to the integral controller it is minus K i 1 upon S this is minus K i 2 upon S right. So, these two are your integral controller for this A G C right. Now, and next is next for this block diagram this delta P L 1 local same as before. So, delta p l 1 uh, local is equal to nothing but delta p l 1 plus delta p l 2 that is your uh, that is in area 1 you have two distribution companies that is why uh, their demand is delta p l 1 and delta 2. So, delta p l p l 1 local will be delta p l 1 plus delta p l 2. Similarly, for delta p l 2 local is equal to delta p l 3 plus delta p l 4 right this is in area 2 and if there is any uncontacted power demand if there is any uncontacted power demand then in that case that it is delta p l 1 you see that is uncontacted power demand in area 1 if apart from their contacted power demand if any if any uh, uh, if any excess power demand needs by any distribution companies in area 1 that will be reflected in area 1 and it is expected that that uh, you have uh, that uh, units generating units in area 1 they have to supply this power right according to AC participation factor 
Similarly, for area 2 also that delta your what you call that your uh, uncontacted power demand whatever it has, it has to be supplied by the same generating unit in area 2 right. So, that means major difference is that this load following controller. So, load following controller. So, philosophy actually totally change right. Uh, previous one was something and here it is something, but you do not need so many load following controller because all the discos may not have contact with gen generating units in uh, any area right. So, this is the your what you call that philosophy. Now, then so now this is whatever about the block diagram I explained. This is the figure to shows the block diagram representation of the two area system shown in figure one, right? Figure one is schematic and figure two I explained to you. Now each area is equipped with an AGC controller. So each unit of the gen cos is equipped with a load following controller, right? So a demand signal that is delta PGC one that arrives directly from the load is compared with the power output of unit one that is delta PG one. I told you to L a mismatch and this mismatch is give is given as an input to the reset controller that is nothing but the load following controller right. So, uh, that will actually force the mismatch to 0, so that the generation follows the load. So, that is called a load following. So, in figure 2 that I already explained let me let me just uh, little bit enlarge it. So, in figure 2 the inputs delta P L 1 local and delta P L 2 local are part of the power system model, but not part of AGC that also we have explained before. Delta P L 1 local is the total local demand in area 1 whereas, delta P L 2 local is the total uh, local demand in area 2 that also I have explained to you right. Uh, diagram also everything I have block diagram I have explained right. So, there is a possibility that that uncontacted power demand that a disco violates a contact by demanding more power then that specified in the contact right. So, this excess power is not contacted out to any genco. This uncontacted power must be supplied by the genco in the same area as the disco that violates the contact right. So, in figure 2 I told you delta P L 1 uncontacted and delta P L 2 uncontacted are the uncontacted power demand that is U C delta P L and U C and delta P L to U C are the uncontacted power demanded by discos in area 1 and area 2 respectively right. So, in each area the AC participation factor also I explained to you right decide the distribution of uncontacted power in the steady state uh, among various generating units right. Next is the state space representation. So, the state space equivalent of figure uh, this 2 it can be represented as x dot is equal to x right plus b u plus b dash v because this v term is coming v 1 v 2 v 3 v 4 because of load following controller b dash and gamma capital P and gamma dash P dash I have made it this is equation 8 right. So, you have 5 terms on the right hand side A, B, B dash gamma and gamma dash and your uh, your what you call A, A, A x B u B dash B gamma capital P and gamma dash capital P dash right. So, you have 5 terms. So, where x is equal to the state variables. So, you have so, you have uh, this um, uh, your uh, two generating units are there. So, 1, 2, 3, 4 this is actual this is a delta p tai 1 to actual 4, 5, 6, 7 right 8, 9, 10, 11. So, there are in a 11 state variables are there. So, state space matrix will be 11 into 11 right and u there are two input that two integral controllers are there for two areas. So, u 1 and u 2 this transpose this is all transpose it is given right. So, next is uh, v there are four load, load following controllers in general. So, that is why v 1, v 2, v 3 and v 4 transpose right and p there are four distribution companies their power demanded are delta p l 1, delta p l 2, delta p l 3 and delta p l 4 and p dash that is uncontacted power demand delta p l 1 u c and delta p l 2 u c transpose. In the previous case we took small p, but here I have taken p dash right. The AGC integral control law for the ith area is given by that is ui that is your AGC controller minus kii integral of ACI dt, where kii is the integral gain of area i and integral ACI dt is the area controller of area i right. So, integral control law 
for the load following for i th unit is given as so v j it is actually it will be j th unit right uh, it is actually it is not a it is j th unit because here it is written j j j and j so it will be your j th unit right so it is actually v j is equal to k j integral of delta p g c j minus delta p g j right so this is a load following controller expression so now now we'll make some case studies right so let us assume that let us assume that unit 2 and unit 4 are under load following contact only that means in area area 1 your area 1 that your unit unit 2 is there and area 2 unit 4 is there so these two are load following contact only unit 1 and unit 3 are for speed regulation purpose only right so further no centralized supplementary control is available that is k i 1 is equal to k i 2 is equal to 0 that means in this diagram in this diagram that is unit 2 and unit 4 under load following that means if we come back to this diagram once again right uh, let me just uh, make it to half right so in this in this diagram that your that unit 2 and unit 4 are load following that means this is unit 2 and this is unit 4 these two will be load following and these two are will be uh, will be just under agc but that no supplementary controller that means this part will not be there this part will not be there and we will examine this case because k i 1 and k i 2 are zeros right. So, so, let me go back to that. Uh, further I told you no centralized supplementary controller is available and all the discos have a total load demand of 0 0.005 per unit megawatt right each which is I mean 0 0.005 per unit megawatt each which is contacted to the various generating units as per the DPM given in equation 16. So, this is actually uh, disco participation matrix is taken. So, in this case in this case that unit 2 and unit 4 they are actually in the load following that means discos have contact that actually this is your distribution company 1 I am putting D 1 instead of discos it will act take more space this is D 2 this is D 3 and this is D 4 right this is D 4 distribution disco 1 disco 1 disco 2 disco 3 disco 4 and this is my unit 1 I am making it short unit 1 it is unit 2 it, uh, it is unit 3 and it is unit 4 right. So, all are unit 3 unit 4 this is unit 1 and this is unit 2 unit 3 and unit 4 right. So, unit 1 and unit 3 are uh, not under any load following that is why uh, they are uh, they have no contact with uh, any any discourse that is why CPF is 0 this row is 0. Similarly, for unit 3 this row is 0 because it has no contact with any other areas uh, any other uh, your what you call they are your uh, this uh, your uh, uh, de, this uh, discourse. So, the disc have no contact with them here also nothing, but for uh, unit 2 and unit 4, 2 in area 1 because this is your area 1 and this is in area 2 because area 1 unit 1 unit 2 area 2 unit 3 and unit 4 right and their participant CPF is given like this right and their CPF is given like this, but if you add this it will be 1 0 0.75 0 0.25 if you add this it will be 1 if you add this it will be 1 and if you add this column wise it will be 1 right. So, this distribution participation matrix is taken right. So, with this thank you very much we will be back again in the next.